All right, that means we're getting to business here. So, oh, there it is. Bell ringer for today. Describe how colonial heritage was an influence to the U.S. Constitution. So I gave a few examples yesterday of how colonial heritage, example, an influence to the U.S. government slash constitution. All right, I'll give you some time to work on that. Get to it. So you have to reach a mile per day, Madden, or how does that work? No, I meant like how many miles per day? Oh, um, it depends. Like yesterday, I'll do a meet, so it's like ten miles. Mm. But usually, I'll do like five. Wow! <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Is it a lot of hills, or is it just flat? I do. Hills. You do hills? Yeah. Even even worse. Yeah. How you doing? I'm just worried when I go hunting Saturday that I'm not. Breathing too heavy, I scare away all the deer. I'm terrible. Yeah, I'm, I'm like out there in the Oh, jeez. You just got to throw a bunch of orange on. Yeah. Scare away all the deer. Yeah, it feels like I do get sick there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Give me a couple minutes here. <laughs> Jeffrey, you have a game tomorrow? Yep. So I won't see you at Venom then. I won't see you at Venom too then. Man, I was going to see you there. I'll tell you all about it the next day. Uh, oh, I'm going to tell you everything. <laughs> well, presentation on Friday will just be all of them, too. Oh, I'm sure it will be. Why wouldn't it be? Okay. All right. All right. There we go. All right, so what do we got here? What do we have? What do we got? Brock, what do you got? All right, so the Mayflower Compact, how is that an influence to the U.S. Constitution government? Yeah, good job. So brain direct democracy, majority rules, and how uh, the people have a say in government, how they choose what's going on with their, uh, their, their government. Good. So policies being made, laws created, you name it. Good job. Good job. All right. What else? What else do we have? Chase, go ahead. Uh, the House of Burgesses. Yeah, the House of Burgesses. Good job. So why is that important? Because uh, they uh, debated issues, made laws, and passed taxes for the whole time. Okay, good. So that's kind of establishing that legislative branch, right? Where the people choose representatives to vote on laws, create laws, okay, and to establish policies for the state. Good job. And at that time, House of Burgesses, unicameral legislature, 
Eventually, we'll talk about the decision to make a bicameral legislature with two houses. Good, good. And then what else? Jeffrey. All right, so that was more like the English influence. Well, what else with religion? What about religion? Express religion freely, right? To allow individuals in the states to express their religion without being harmed or uh, the government to go against their said religion or to establish one said religion. Good, good, good. Any questions, guys, on the colonial heritage, how that was an influence to the U.S. government? Constitution? No? All right, awesome. So terms for today. Here we go. Give you a vocab list. How about we go over four of them today? Well, I can zoom in so far. So it is what it is. There's some from the other day yet. So you got Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, Jean Jacques Rousseau, and Baron de Montesquieu. There you go. So you have Enlightenment thinkers coming out in the last stage here, the fourth stage, two constitutional influences. And we'll finish up these Enlightenment thinkers tomorrow, and then I'll assign your project presentation, okay, for the Enlightenment thinkers. Another presentation. Oh, man. Well, you can work with partners this time around if you want. So you can work with partners. Well, I think last time you were too, so we'll get it figured out. All right, I'll give you some time. Write down these terms here. Bless you. All right, so Thomas Hobbes, what do we have? What do we got? What do we got here? Jamie, what do you have for Thomas Hobbes? Um, 
English materials and political philosopher who advocated absolute singularity as the only kind of government that could resolve problems. Oh, okay. All right. So Thomas Hobbes, this Enlightenment thinker, believed that government needed to be absolute, right? Needed to have some sort of authoritative approach to control the people. Good. So we'll mention him a little bit more in detail about his viewpoint on what government should be like to people. And a lot of people criticize it. It's like, wait a minute. This can't be right. No way. What about John Locke? What about John Locke? For John Locke here. Jeffrey, what do we got for John Locke? English philosophizer and physician regarding being known as father of liberalism. All right. Good job. Good job. So main thing to know for John Locke is that he's pushing for freedoms, for liberties, for people. Okay, making sure that this government isn't absolute. So when you look at Thomas Hobbes and John Locke, they collided with ideas. They didn't really uh, really compare when it came to freedoms and, and rights. John, John Locke thinks, well, everybody should be born with certain freedoms. Okay, and Thomas Hobbes, not so much. Uh, the government should make decisions for the people in an authoritative, absolute role. Oh, boy. Okay. What about Rousseau? Rousseau, go ahead back there, Rem. Uh, Swiss born philosopher, writer of political prose, who created the novel of Five Labor Systems. Okay, good job, good job. So, Rousseau, another Enlightenment thinker, his main contribution was this social contract. Right, we all know what the social contract is, right? That was a theory of government, correct? What does that mean? Social contract. What does that mean? I know we went over it in the first chapter. Madden, what's a social contract? You don't know. Yeah, you do. Social contract theory? No? Oh. All right. What does it mean? Sarah, what does a social contract mean? I know you answered this actually first time. I remember you answering this question. Yeah, good job. So the people are giving up rights to the government for protection, for public services, economic decisions, right? Maintaining social order. Good. Awesome. Does that make sense, guys? Awesome. Good, good, good. So there's a social contract signed with the government and the people. All right, last one here. Montesquieu. Montesquieu. Uh-oh. Hello? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Hi. Angel, you're supposed to go out back for pickup at the end of the day, not to ride the bus. You have a doctor's appointment, I guess. Well, that is news. Yeah. So that's why I got the phone call. Yeah, your, your grandma's picking up. All right. Okay. Last one here, Montesquieu. What do we have here? What do we got? Rem, go ahead, man. Spirit of laws. Okay, good, good. So let's break it down even more. Montesquieu believe that government shouldn't become too powerful, that there actually should be branches of government to try to separate the powers, right? So does that make sense? So there's going to be a separation of powers within the government and make sure that one branch doesn't become too strong, to make sure that government doesn't become absolute, that it doesn't become a monarchy, absolute monarchy. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So let's discuss these guys in a little bit more detail. Never mind. I did know about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just, just let you know about it. All right. Yep, no problem. So Thomas Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes, look at that guy. Wow. Huh. Wow, okay, yeah. So absolute monarchy. I don't know if that's correct or not. I don't know, I don't know. If you're trying to think for freedoms, for rights, maybe this isn't your guy. Right, Jeffrey? Yes. Yeah, this guy's, oh, we need an absolute monarchy. We need to have an authoritative government. Wow, okay. So he wrote the Le Leviathan, the Leviathan. And he believed that the absolute monarchy is the best because he believed that people were immoral. 
that they couldn't make good characteristics, that they couldn't make good moral decisions, right? Overall, he thought people were evil and they needed an authoritative figure in their life to guide them in the right direction, to make sure that they are making the right decisions. And some politicians, okay, believe that maybe that is the case. And people need government in their life to almost make decisions for them, okay? But Thomas Hobbes' belief is that government should be a role of almost like a caretaker, okay? <laughs> almost like a father figure in a way, where they're making the decisions for the people in an absolute way. An absolute monarchy is the best gov government for Thomas Hobbes. All right, so we're going to talk about how these Enlightenment thinkers might contradict that, that might try to challenge Thomas Hobbes' beliefs. <clears throat> All right, so believe people need a government to impose order. So again, absolute monarchy, that's Thomas Hobbes' belief, is uh, his idea that way where a government should be formed and should be created. Whoa, whoa, what the heck's going on there? It's flickering like purple. Back. Back, okay. Wires must got a little loose. Again, so he believed that people were selfish, greedy, okay? And uh, he believes in a way that Rousseau or this social contract should be established. Okay, so he believed that people were immoral, that they acted out, they didn't act with rational, critical thinking skills, that they didn't have the ability to have these rights and freedoms because they will act out. They will commit crimes if given these freedoms. So he wants to draw the people back in, making sure that there's absolute monarchy holding people. Um, almost to a desire, I want a good moral characteristic. Okay, so again, authoritative government, absolute monarchy. Thomas Hobbes thinks this is appropriate for the people. So if we had to give a symbol for Thomas Hobbes, I guess we can give him like a crown, right? We can give him a crown because he thinks this absolute monarchy is essential. He thinks that this is the uh, desired uh, the, the desired government for the people that act immoral, that need guidelines, that need some sort of uh, outlook, right? Okay, you guys good on Thomas Hobbes? Can I move on? All right, so remember his work, The Leviathan, again, just really talking about the ideas of how an absolute monarchy is needed. Now, people need this authoritative government. All right, next, Enlightenment thinker, John Locke. So he believed that all people were born equal. Wow, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Right, Jeffrey? Where can you find that? Okay, all right, yeah. Declaration of Independence, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so John Locke is gonna be someone that the founding fathers looked towards when creating this constitution. And a lot of it's because the freedoms, the rights that are given to people. He didn't think that Thomas Hobbes was right or correct when it comes to People are greedy or selfish. He thinks that people have the ability to make the right decisions, given the freedoms, given those liberties, right? That government shouldn't be absolute and shouldn't be an authoritative government, okay? That people should be able to live free their lives. All right, so again, government should protect people's natural rights, maybe through the judiciary system, right? Through a Supreme Court, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So to try to protect these liberties, if any case someone would act out or commit a crime, there should be some sort of government body that protects the people. Make sense? Okay, another branch of government. Okay, that makes sense. And again, he criticized this idea that monarchs were chosen by God. He said that's not the case. Absolute monarchy should not be this absolute this uh, this designed government. We should have this government where people are free. Or they have these liberties, have these freedoms, almost like a utopia, right? Yeah. So government by consent, meaning that the people will allow government to have designed jobs, have designed uh, principles that the people will give to them. So in a way, it's like a limited government that's consented by the people. So if the people agree that this should be a government um, job or a government uh, uh, power, then it must be voted on by the people. That makes sense. So the people choose to be, choose government to be a little bit more influential in times of need or in times of 
obviously good fortune, they can say government can pull back its reign. And there's examples of that, obviously, let's say with a depression, a recession, or a pandemic. Maybe the government should step up a little bit more and be a little bit more involved with the people to help them out in these certain needs. But if the economy is rolling well, if there is no pandemic, no recession, no depression, maybe government should step off a little bit. But it's up to the people to choose how the government's role is in society. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. All right, so power limited by laws. <clears throat> so again, the government is limited by the people. The people choose what type of uh, power the government should have. But at the same time, there should be principles that everybody should follow. Okay, there should be laws given that make sure that everybody is uh, obviously not committing unjust crimes or chaos on the streets or anarchy. You give people these freedoms, these luxuries, that's what Thomas Hobbes fe uh, feared the most then there's just gonna be chaos. There will be anarchy, okay? So there must be somewhat of a balance, right? So again, ideas, foundation for modern democracy, and he wrote the two treaties on government. So one thing that John Locke really established was this idea of life, liberty, and property. Life, liberty, and property. So make sure you guys write down those liberties, those freedoms that he believed everybody should have. Life, liberty, and property. Almost like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? Yeah, yeah, very similar, right? Again, founding fathers looking back at John Locke thinking, he, this guy's on the right track. So a good way to think about it Maybe for a symbol of John Locke, you can put a lock and inside of it, life, liberty, property. Three freedoms, liberties that are given to the people that government can't take away. Life, liberty, and property. You can have your own land. Government can't take that away from you. Liberties, your freedoms, your rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, you name it. And your life to make sure that government isn't absolute, that it doesn't try to take away your freedoms or limit your freedoms, depending on the situation. Okay, you guys go with John Locke. So you got Thomas Hobbes, absolute monarchy, the crown. You can look at John Locke, or yeah, Thomas Hobbes, and John Locke, we can look at life, liberty, and property, the freedoms, the uh, principles that our government really falls through with with our freedoms and liberties all right rousseau all right so believe that people were basically good so again he challenged this idea of thomas hobbes where people were immoral or bad characteristic or evil he believed that people were good and he also believed that society corrupted people saying that governments over time and in this case religion caused a lot of uh, corruption, caused a lot of bad moral characteristics to leak out to society that created these uncivilized people, these uh, maybe, maybe these uh, uh, atrocious people, bad moral characteristics. So you think that society under these absolute monarchies pushed for people to challenge, rebel against the government. He thought something needed to be done. There had to be an agreement between the people and the government to try to stop these unjusts, to try to stop these rebellions and constant conflict and constant issues. And gov government can't be constantly uh, uh, absolute. Okay? It can't be an authoritative figure in people's lives. There needs to be an agreement. So he wrote the social contract. The social contract. So again, social contract where people give up certain freedoms, certain rights in order for protections from the government, for them to make economic decisions for them, to provide defenses, okay, provide safety to the people, provide public services for the people, right? Decide on economic decisions. And at the same time, these people had liberties. They had freedoms that the government can't take away from them. 
So again, he again is conflicted against Thomas Hobbes. He thinks people are good moral characteristics. He, he believes that government should not be absolute, that there should be some sort of freedoms given to the people, and that there not there must be a contract signed between the uh, government and the people. And this is kind of where this constitutional monarchy came about. And we all know what a constitutional monarchy is, right? So what reigns supreme in a constitutional monarchy? What is above the monarch in a constitutional monarchy? The constitution, yeah, there you go. Good, good. So that grants the freedoms of the people, restricts government, makes sure that these liberties are followed through. Okay, good. So here's a quote from Rousseau. So man is born free, but elsewhere. So everywhere is in chains. So man is born free, but everywhere is in chains. Meaning that, well, these people were born not like what Thomas Hobbes believed, immoral or um, bad, uh, bad intentions. He believed that people were born free, had these liberties, have these freedoms, but society changes the mold of what people are and present themselves. That this government that was formed with the absolute monarchy, okay, that controls people to maybe become bad tempered, okay, bad personalities, bad characteristics. Okay, that society changes people's demeanor, people's personality, people's characteristics, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So great way to remember it, Rousseau, through social contract, right? Yeah, Rousseau social contract. That's an easy way to remember it, I think, anyway. So more on Rousseau. So believe government should work for common good, not wealthy few. Oh, oh no, kick me off. <coughs> Darn it. Now, well, give me some time here. Just had too much going on at once. so again the social contract meaning that government should work for the people that government should try to protect these freedoms these rights for the people what the heck is this it's not the one i wanted oh my gosh this is all wacky now. There you go. Okay, we're back. We're back now. So he believed that government should not just bend over for these wealthy elite, okay, that they should not uh, cater towards the elite Okay, that there should be a uh, really equality amongst economic classes in government. And I think, obviously, with the progressive era and progressive movements in American society, they took a lot of these ideas from Rousseau. <clears throat> Again, the social contract individuals should give up, should uh, give up freedoms for benefit of community. Uh, community as a whole uh, should reign supreme above the individual. So despised inequality in society, views inspire revolutionaries the years to come. A lot of that has to do with uh, economic classes, economic status. Okay, he viewed what was going on with these capitalist societies moving into the 1800s and thought, wow, this is really creating a gap, a division amongst social classes, economic classes, to a point where there's going to be constant conflict. And representing that feudal pyramid, right? At the very bottom, you have the peasants. Were they given any rights at all? No. Okay, not at all. So you wanted to make sure that there is an equal playing field for all people. That there's opportunities for every individual in society, not just the higher class, not the wealthy elite. So in a way, he criticized the early comings of capitalism. Right? And how there should be some sort of balance to make sure that opportunities were equal for all people not just shifted for a select few. You guys good with that? Yeah? 
All right. Last enlightenment thinker here, Montesquieu, that I want to discuss today. So his biggest thing was separation of powers. Separation of powers. So government should be divided among each other, that there should be branches to make sure that government doesn't become too strong, let's say, in one chamber. So that there's this balance of powers, a separation of powers can keep each other in check. Right? So that an absolute monarchy doesn't ever come about again. So that there should be branches that have powers above each other that could cancel each other out in cases of, let's say, a lopsided political party that might control every aspect of government. And then we can represent that within, within our government. So with the House, the Senate, and the executive branch right now, okay, we know that it's democratic. And uh, obviously for the Democratic Party, that's great for their policies, to push through their policies. Okay. In other cases, and we'll see here with the, the midterm elections coming up here soon, this might change things, obviously in favor or try to cancel things out. Uh, as a Republican Party, maybe we'll gain some footing in the House, in the Senate. Okay. So this balance of powers makes sure that one party doesn't become too strong. We all know the judicial branch, Supreme Court, politics should stay out of these decision making when it comes to crimes or penalties, you name it. So his big thing, he wrote The Spirit of Laws, published in 1748. And he believed that there should be a balance. We all know what the constitutional monarchy is, parliament, there's House of Lords, House of Commons, okay, the constitutional monarchy expresses expresses and shows that you know what the monarch doesn't have all this absolute power okay that this is divided up amongst the forms of government so easy way to remember montesquieu's contributions montesquieu separation of powers right branches of government just break his last name down with the syllables montesquieu three branches separation of powers checks and balances for the government All right, is there any questions, guys, on the Enlightenment thinkers that we went over? So again, Thomas Hobbes, think of the crown, absolute monarch. He thinks everybody is immoral. Think of uh, John Locke. So he's locking in your life, liberty, and property, your freedoms, your liberties, can't be taken away from him, right? Think of Rousseau, Rousseau's social contract. So he believes that there should be a contract signed amongst the people and government. Right. These rights are given up to the government for protection, for public services, you name it. And finally, Montesquieu, Montesquieu, separation of powers, so that government doesn't become too strong. And in the case of the United States government, one political party doesn't dictate what's going on, and that there is ability for challenge, and making sure that uh, there is a balance of power and a separation of powers. Three branches of government. All right, you guys good with that? All right, that's all I have. So remember, October 1st, that is when, that is when uh, those assignments are due. So make sure you guys have those done. Email me the assignment name when you complete them so I can give you credit for it.